Hello. You know what? Chris told Cooking Monster to do the birthdays this week, but Cooking Monster's too busy, as usual, in the kitchen cooking. So he said, I had to do it all on my own. It's not fair. I always have to do everything, usually on my own. I know. Let's see if Rachel can help me. Rachel, are you there? Hi, John. Come and sit next to me. Okay, that's nice. Hello, how are you? Hi. We've got to do birthdays. Have we? Yeah. Okay. Just you and me. Just you and me. Where's Robin? And all then? the boys and girls will join okay, in. Okay, that's brilliant. Where's Robin? I don't know. Okay. I wonder he's where got he's lost. Got to. <laughs> has he? Maybe he's helping Cooking Monster. What, clearing up all the mess in the kitchen? Yeah, Cookie okay. Monster does the cooking okay. and Robin does all the washing up. <laughs> okay. Right, do you know whose birthday it is? No. I think it's Lily's birthday. Lily's birthday. Yeah, and do you know how old she's going to be? I think she's going to be... Uh, 22. No, Cooking, she's not going to be that old. Uh, sorry, John, I'm calling you Cooking. Sorry, John, she's not going to be that old. How old is she there? She's going to be ten. Ten. Double figures. I I've only got yeah. four fingers. Yeah, you haven't got enough fingers on your hand, have you? But we'll remember today? ten. Okay. Okay. Right. Do you think you ought to wear the birthday hat if Robin isn't here? Okay. Okay, let me just get the birthday hat for you. Working hard today. Working very hard. Are you ready? Stand, sit still or stand still. There we are. How does that feel? Oh. Is that good? I look like a girly. No, you don't look like a girly. Shall I wear the I other do. one? Whoops. It's falling off yeah, now. Yeah, you're falling it off. Look, just stand still. There. Squeeze your head in there. Put your ears in. That's it. And your other ear. You there? Yeah, Wonderful. I think so. Okay. Ha ha. <laughs> ha ha. Can't see your eyes now. Let's bend that up. There we are. Right. Come on. Shall just I get on with it. as well? Okay. Right. I've even got a candle down here. So you can help me blow it out at the end. Okay? Afterwards. Yeah. We'll okay. do the singing first. Yeah, I'll help you with the claps ready? as well. So I'll Are you ready as well? One, two, three. B I R T H D A Y. B I R T H D A Y. Oh, sing along. Happy birthday to you. Sing it soft. Sing it loud, sing it just for you. I'll sing along. Happy birthday to you. May Jesus be with you all day through. Lily, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. May Jesus be with you all year through. Let's give Lily a great big round of applause. Can now, I blow out the candle? Well, as Lily's not here, John, I think you're going to have to. So let's see the candle here. There it is. It's already lit. I had it down here. Sorry, I didn't have a table for you all to see. Can you blow, John? I'll try. Okay, shall I count to three? One, two... It won't go out. Do you want me to help? Yes, please. <gasps> we just about.
that got there. We did it. Well done. Happy okay. birthday, Lily. Hope you have a wonderful day. Bye. Bye, John. See you again soon. Bye bye. Well, everybody, last week was quite an exciting quiz, wasn't it? We had lots of strange sounds. But before I give you the answers for that, I just want to say well done to the Asante family because they did answer the quiz from the week before. They did answer them before we gave the answers, so they weren't cheating, but well done to them for the week before. But as I said, last week's was quite an interesting quiz with lots of very strange sounds. And I had some very interesting answers. I will tell you in a minute who got the answers correct uh, or how many they got correct. But would you like to know what the sounds were? I expect you would. Let's listen to the first one and then I'll tell you what it was. Hmm, interesting. Bit of a confusing sound, that one. Let's hear it once more. Many of you said that it was a lamb or sheep. In actual fact, it was a goat. So, well done for having a go, but there was actually two children who told me that was a goat. I'll tell you who they were in a minute. Should we listen to the next sound? Now, Esther said that that was Robin snoring. Esther, you got it completely wrong. It was not Robin snoring. It was a cat purring. So well done those who managed to find realise that that was a cat and not Robin. Okay, let's listen to sound three. sound correct it was a plane taking off I think maybe it's this area that we live in which maybe helped you get that one fortunately we've not had so many planes around at the moment but I think we're starting to get a few more so well done if you managed to get that one correct now let's listen to the next sound was the most confusing sound of them all and most you said it was soaring wood it was actually soaring through something or slicing through something it was actually slicing some bread I think it must have been very crusty bread which maybe gave that impression of it soaring but it was someone slicing up some bread so let's now listen to the next sound Yes, I agree. It does sound a little bit like a rusty old bicycle squeaking, but it was actually crickets. So well done if you said that that was crickets. Now, I think we're listening to the last sound, which I think most of you got correct, but let's have a listen. Once more. That's correct. It was a rooster or a cockerel crowing. So well done. And that sound actually was in, our, we mentioned that in our story last week as well. So I want to say well done to the Gray family for having a go, for little Poppy, who again attempted to give me the answers, 
to Tobias for having a go. That was Timmy and Harry who helped. But most of all, I want to say well done to Florence and Zach because they got, apart from the soaring, they got them all correct. They realised that they were goats and not sheep. But most people um, thought that it was a sheep. So well done everyone for having a go. And hopefully if you did have a go, you received a few little goodies on your doorstep. We're now going to be having a song, which the Cole family are going to lead us in. So let's all join in with the Coles. Ladies gentlemen, I'm sitting down and this is... Oh, Oh, it's <laughs> <laughs> Rachel. Yeah. I've got an experiment for this week. Mm, you really worry me when you have exciting things. Do you to remember do. the water one then? The one you needed you tipped over my head. Yeah. Yeah. This has got water in it. Oh no. But you're not going to get wet. Are you sure? This is an experiment you could do at home, but you would definitely need an adult to do it with you, if not for you. Okay? Okay. I have here Is it dangerous? No, I don't think it is really. But let's just see. I have here it, a fizzy drink bottle with some water in it. So I'm going to shake up the water in the fizzy drink bottle. Okay. And then I'm going to pour it away. Okay. So I pour the fizzy the water. Now the fizzy drink I water. I don't think I trust you. Now that matches the match I gave you. Could you strike oh, that matches. match? I've forgotten you'd given me these. Okay. Strike the match. Oh, let me get one of the long ones. It might be a bit safer. Okay. I'm a little bit worried. Make sure everybody can see. You see the match there? Yep. And we put the bottle not just on top okay. of the match. Do I blow it out yet? Is that Ooh, safe? Oh, you could do. Try blowing it out. Oh, let's catch okay. some more. Okay. And then I tighten up the top. Yeah. So we now have a bottle with yeah. no. Not all of this. What happens when I squeeze it, I wonder? Okay. 
not a lot of oh. oh, look. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, wow. It's actually going oh. cloudy. When you squeeze it, oh, look. It's can cloudy you see that? now. But when you squeeze clearing. it. When I, when I squeeze it. It goes clear again. It goes clear. And then it goes wow. cloudy. Robin, you've created a cloud. I have. It's worth trying at home because you'll get a better idea of how cloudy it gets. But it works well. It does work well, but if you are wanting to try that at home, make sure your mum and dad do it for you, okay? Mm. You can do the squeezing, but they need the rest of it because it is a little bit dangerous and I don't want anyone getting hurt, so it must be mum and dad that do that experiment. But actually, Robin... We've got a story coming up. We have. I, just want, I just want to tell you yes. that I'm actually very impressed. You are. I'm not always oh, impressed good. with your experiments, anyway. but that one I right. am. We've got a story coming up which involves, in a way, clouds. Mm. And Ella's going to tell us all about what happened. Yeah. And see if you can listen out for some clouds. Okay, over to Ella. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm about to read you a story. So either sit down with your eyes closed and picture the story as I read it, or you may look at the pictures. You are in the upper room, the same room where you shared the Passover meal with Jesus six weeks ago. All of you are there, talking quietly. Suddenly, you turn around and Jesus is standing in the middle of the room. How do you feel? Jesus explains that the Old Testament showed that he had to die. You remember seeing Jesus on the cross. Does it still make you feel sad? He reminds you that he died to take the punishment for all the things you have done wrong so that you can know God. You look at the holes in Jesus' hands where the nails held him to the cross and remember the things you have done wrong. How do you feel about Jesus? Jesus gives you a job. He says that you and all the disciples must spread the message of good news to everyone starting in Jerusalem, then going to all of Judea, everywhere the Jews live, and then going to everyone in the whole world. You must tell them the good news that Jesus died for them so that they can get to know God as well. How do you feel? Where will you start? Jesus tells you that he will send the Holy Spirit to help you and he will give you power to be able to do miracles, to help people believe the message. Are you excited? Are you a bit worried? How do you feel? Then Jesus asks you to come with him. All of you stand up and go outside. There are flowers in the grass and the air smells fresh and sweet. The sun is warm and Jesus leads you up the hill. You are out of breath when you get to the top and Jesus stops. Are you glad to sit down on the soft grass? Jesus stretches out his hands and blesses you. Then suddenly a cloud hides him and he is taken up to heaven. You realise that you will never see him standing beside you on earth again. How do you feel? As you stare into the sky, trying to see if Jesus is still there, two men wearing white suddenly appear near you. They ask, why are you still here looking into the sky? You saw Jesus taken away from you into heaven. He will come back in the same way you saw him go. How does all this make you feel? Is this the end of the story? Or just the beginning of the next part? Are you confused? Are you excited? What will you do next? Thank you Ella for telling us that story. I hope you enjoyed it all very much and it got you thinking and wondering about lots of things that were going on then. Yeah, did you spot the clouds? <laughs> I hope you did. <laughs> So, in today's story, Jesus left his disciples. They were probably very mystified, you know. What about what was going on? Why do you think Jesus had to leave? Well, 
Jesus had appeared to many of his disciples quite a few times, but he couldn't be with them all the time in the form okay. that he was, yeah. in the present form that he was. And he needed them to go away and do some special work. Right. I think that Jesus needed to return so the special helper could come yeah. and be with all the disciples all the time. Special work, though. Mm. What was the special work, the special jobs that they had to do? Well, Jesus wanted them to go and tell everyone about him, how he had died, how he had died for them, so yeah. they could all be forgiven, okay. and how people could get to know God better, and show people how we should love and care for each other. We heard that they shouldn't start, they should start in Jerusalem, mm -hmm. um, on their home ground, mm. and then they had to find a place further away. Mm. and venture even more out into the world slowly mm. and slowly and more and more that's right yes but jesus knew they could not do this in their on their own in their own strength which yeah. is why the special helper the holy spirit would come and give them the power that they needed to do the task that lay ahead and then the special helper would be them all the time wherever they went okay so our cloud experiment mm -hmm. it sort of reminds us a little that we can't see Jesus, but we believe he's with us yeah. all the time yeah. through the Holy Spirit. Yeah, like that cloud. Sometimes we could see it in the plastic bottle, couldn't we? It was almost disappearing and then yeah. coming back again. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I know a song. Ah, yes, yeah. I know. You know song yes, well. I know that song it's as well. It's called Everywhere I Go, You Are There. And although when we sing it, we're singing You Are There, Robin tends to sing the main line. We're not saying he's there, he's not there all the time. What we're actually singing is that God is there all the time. We know that his Holy Spirit surrounds us. So that's what we're seeing. God is there. And the chorus is mm -hmm. your hands are guiding me. Mm -hmm. And we can be guided. You imagine that we are being guided. So there's a section where we're going to be guided. Yeah. Okay. okay. Should we do it? We shall do it. Yeah. Just join in as best you can.
I go to the park on the swing, if I go to the school, and if I go to the beach and swim, and if I go back home, and if when I go to sleep, I hope you enjoyed singing along with us in that song. And it just reminds us that everything we're going through, God is with us through all the good things and through all the bad things. You may not be able to go to school at the moment or go to the park, although we are allowed to go out. We can go to the park we can and we can go back home. But I don't think they can actually play on the equipment in parks, okay. Robin. Yeah, but yeah, right. if you go to the park, you know that God is with you. He's with you all the time, no matter where you are. Do you know, I've just been thinking more about the stories we've been yes. doing, okay? okay? Now, Jesus dying on the cross was really, really awful. But that had to happen so that we could be forgiven for all the things we've done wrong. And then we can have a wonderful relationship with God, which is really, really good. So there's something really awful happening. But because of that, something really good has happened. We can understand that now, but mm. I'm sure back in Jesus' mm. time, the disciples didn't really understand that no. at all. No. They were probably very upset that mm. Jesus had just left them. Yeah. Um, and then he's going to leave them with the Holy Spirit, which they didn't know anything about either. Yeah. And they just, I don't know. Mm. What do you think? So Jesus leaving them was really not good. They Correct. felt very upset about it. But the Holy Spirit coming was actually something really, really good. But they didn't know it was but they be didn't, good. No, they didn't. I think they were a bit excited because okay. Jesus had hinted mm. that something was going to happen, but they didn't quite know. They didn't know how good mm. it was going to be. Now, during this time of lockdown, I know it has not been a good time for many people. Um, for you, you haven't been able to go to school. You haven't been able to see your friends. You haven't been able to visit your relationships. But I know that for some people, things have happened which they've actually been really surprised about. They've actually thought, if this hadn't happened, I wouldn't have experienced this good things. For me, I've enjoyed that I've been able to not have to rush out of the house to meetings in the evenings or rush out the first thing in the morning. I've been allowed to sit round the table and enjoy meals with two of the children that I've got at home. That's been a really, really good experience for me. We've also discovered parts of Egham, which we, have. we didn't know were there. After 30 odd years, <laughs> 30 we suddenly odd found years, some new bits. Some new bits of Egham, which yeah. we didn't know, which have been really, really exciting, yeah. which we wouldn't have had the time That's to right. do. So although there's been lots of negatives, there's been lot, some positives. There have been some yeah. positives. Let's listen to some of our leaders mm. and hear about some of their experiences mm. during lockdown. Hello everybody at Footprints and Little Footprints. Rachel's asked me a question, whether I think anything good has come out of this lockdown that we've been going through over the last few weeks. And thinking about it, I think there's been quite a lot of good things that have come out of it. I can think of the fact we're more caring now and, and look after our neighbours and our friends. We may not be able to see them, but Lots of people phone up or drop things at the, the door, uh, do shopping, run errands. And I think that's really, really kind. We're getting to know our neighbours if we perhaps didn't know them beforehand. And uh, also we appreciate now all the things people do for us. The doctors and nurses and care workers, they've been working so hard caring for people. And also all the other people that... Uh, serving the shops or deliver the food they've been working really hard at this very difficult time so I think there's lots of other things as well but I think we can be really thankful that so many people are caring and doing kind and nice things to to help others Hi uh, for me the lockdown has allowed me to come and stay with my parents 
and they have a lovely garden to lie out in the sun, um, which I didn't have back in Egham. Hello, it's Hilary here. Well, I'm sitting in my garden on this lovely sunny afternoon, a bit windy, blue skies, a bit of cloud. And the reason is because I've been driven out of my kitchen. Oh, I'll tell you a bit more about that in a minute. Well, do you know what I've been doing this week? I've been reading about creation in the book of Genesis, in the Bible, and it tells me all about Adam, God, put him on the earth and he said Adam I want you to have dominion over all the animals what does that mean well it means to look up to be responsible to have care and respect and he gave me gave him another task as well which was wonderful to name them all so do you know I think that he must have looked at them observed them saw what they were doing and then decided to choose their names and it's a bit a bit bit like lockdown you know during lockdown I'm sitting here and I'm seeing far more nature around and it is lovely however 4 30 a.m. every morning I have four visitors they come in the garden mr. dog fox his wife she's got four black paws I call her blackfoot that's the wife and two cubs and they run round the garden and they grub up the lawn and they try and find things to eat and then they do a lap of the garden all excited and run away and you know God loves those animals and he loves each one of us and we're meant to look after and be careful and respect all animals now I hope that during lockdown might have the opportunity to look at nature a little bit more. Now just before I go I'll just tell you about my uninvited guest. In a minute I'm going to stop talking to you because I've got to go and have a little prayer time and work out how I'm meant to sort out the problem I've got. He came in not so long ago, he's very noisy, he's very loud and at the moment he's snoozing on the top of my kitchen shelf. Now his name is, uh, ooh, well actually I looked in my Bible and I also found that he drove out lots, well his ancestors drove out lots of people years ago. Now his name is, well I'm not going to tell you because I've got to go back in to the house via my front door, not through the kitchen. And if you want to find out who my uninvited guest is, or part of nature, look in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 20, and you'll find out who he is. And maybe another time I'll tell you how I solved my problem. Bye. Thank you for that. We do know that we've all experienced difficult days during this time and life may well be very different in the future. So we need to look to Jesus and to the Holy Spirit to help us with everything we're going through today and in the future. Over the last couple of weeks, we've been learning the actions to My Lighthouse. And I know that when I'm in times of difficulty, that I can look to Jesus because he's my rescuer, a bit like a lighthouse that leads people away from danger and difficult situations. So we're now going to sing My Lighthouse, but before we do that, we're just going to go verse. through the next yeah. verse, okay? Mm. It's very easy, though, uh, where have we got to? It's, I won't fear what tomorrow, what tomorrow brings with, with each morning. morning. Oh, rise and, and sing. sing. Have a big stretch like you do in the mornings, okay? My, My God's, God's love, love will lead, lead me through. through. You, you are, are the peace, peace in my, my troubled sea. sea. Are we ready? Okay, should we go from the beginning? Yes, I'm sure it. you've picked up by now, you're much yeah. quicker than we are. Okay. In my wrestling, in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in the troubled sea. Well, 
you are the peace in my troubled sea. In the silence, you won't let go. In my questions, your truth will roll. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Whoa, you are the peace in my troubled sea. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness, you'll follow you home. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, I will trust the promise, you will carry me safe to shore. That is brilliant. Okay. Do you know, I'm doing a lot of thinking this morning. You're doing a lot of I'm thinking. I'm yeah. thinking my brain is going over yeah. time. Go okay. Um, Jesus didn't just want the disciples to tell everyone about him. It is a command he's given to all of us. To you. To me. And me. To you. And, and you. to all of you out there. Crumbs. And you know, the Holy Spirit is here with us all. Jesus didn't just send the Holy Spirit to be with the disciples. Yes, it's something for us today. Yep, for us as well. Mm. So it is up to us to tell everyone about Jesus too. Yes, it is, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we can have the power that we need yeah. just when we need it. Okay. Mm. In fact, it's a bit like a sort of a domino effect. Mm. I think you're gonna have to explain it a little bit well, more. Well, yeah. okay. Let's take a look. We could be the person at the front mm -hmm. of the dominoes who's heard yeah. about Jesus, and then yeah. you tell someone else, yeah, and you fall over to them, and then they tell someone else, and someone else, and someone else, mm -hmm. and someone else. It's a sort of a okay. passing it on. Yeah. But if you tell two people, yeah, then there's two people passing it on, okay, and it goes twice as twice okay. as quickly. So a bit like passing the baton as well. Yes, yeah? telling everyone because, like, let's let's face it, we had all the disciples 
who then passed it on to other people, who passed it on to more people. And that's why the Christian church has grown. Exactly. Because we've all yeah. passed the message on. Do you want to? Let's have a demonstration. Okay. I'll see if I can find one. I'm excited. So there are some verses in the Bible which tells the disciples that they are to go out and tell everyone about Jesus, about what he has done for us. Now those verses are not just for the disciples, they're for us as well. So what is this verse? Here it is, Robin. Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 to 20. So go and make followers of all people in the world. Baptise them in the name of the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach them to obey everything that I have taught you, and I will be with you always, even until the end of this age. I think those are such wonderful verses, especially knowing that Jesus has promised he will, he will be with us till the end of all time, the end of the age. We haven't got a quiz this week, but I was wondering about setting a challenge this week. Could the children make up actions to go with the verse that you can see there, to help them remember it? Or if you're a musical family, maybe you can make up a tune so we could sing it. Everyone who sends in recordings will get a little goodie bag. And if your parents give permission, we will include them in next week's footprint session. Now, Sophia, will lead us in our prayers. Hi, I'm Sophia, and I'm leading the prayers for this week. Dear Lord Jesus, you told your disciples to tell the rest of the world about your love and word. Please help us to do the same. Give us the courage to tell our friends and family not just what you've done for us, but for them as well. Show them your love through us. Give us strength so we can become one of your witnesses as well. Just as you said in Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witness in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Amen. Thank you, Sophia, for leading us in our prayers this morning. We're now going to say the Lord's Prayer together. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your, your name. name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come. come. Your, Your will, will be done, done on earth as, as it is in heaven. Give us our daily bread. bread. Forgive Give us our sins, sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours forever and ever. Amen. 
Well, that's all we've got time for this week. We look forward to seeing your actions for the memory verse or maybe your little tunes and how you turn it into a song. I know it's quite a challenge, mm. but it is half term. So, Let us know yeah. how you're on... Um... Smoke experiments got on. Oh, yes, that's Yeah, I'll have to get those. For a minute. It's been a long <laughs> session, hasn't it? <laughs> okay, we're now going to leave you with our blessing. We hope you have a really good week and uh, no homeschooling, hopefully, for the next rest of the week. Let us know what's happening about schools as well. Bye for now. Bye bye. with you.